Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to go through the review and setup of an AM43 blind motor. A great little device for raising and lowering blinds. It's a Zigbee device, although there is a Bluetooth version available as well, uh, that's supposed to work with the Bluetooth proxy protocol that's inside of Home Assistant. But I haven't tested that one. This is just purely the Zigbee one. So let's get into the unboxing and see what we get in the packaging. So what's in the AM43 blind box? First off, we have a solar panel with a light meter with some handy suction cups to attach it to a window. Next, the actual unit itself, Zigbee Toya, a connection bar, an Australian plug with a small jack that goes into the bottom of the main unit. There are four wheels for connecting various different types of cords to the unit. There's a 3M attachment that connects to the detachable unit on the back of the actual main unit to allow it to be uncoupled. And of course, there's a manual. Now let's add the blinds in to our home assistant. Moving across into settings, going across into devices and services, selecting add integration, select add Zigbee device. We need to make sure that the device is in pairing mode. To do this, you press the settings button at the bottom and the down button and hold for approximately three seconds. I found that three or four seconds is actually better, um, not exceeding five seconds. Once you've done that, the blind should show up. Rename to the device you want to name by. I call mine blinds and put into a location. Now let's go and see if the device is there. Going back into devices and search for blinds. We can see our blinds show up. If we go across into them, we can see that they have some very basic instructions. Up, stop and down. To set the upper limit, press the settings button for three seconds. A red indicator light will illuminate on the front of the device. Then press the up button to indicate that you want to adjust the upper limit. Use the up and down button to adjust the blind to the upper limit that you require. Then press and hold the settings button for three seconds to lock this in place and save it. A blue light will flash on the front. Likewise, when setting the lower limit, press the settings button for three seconds. Then the light on the front, the LED light, will flash red. Then press the down button that you are... This will indicate that you are going to be setting the lower limit. Uh, use the up and down button to adjust to the position that you require. Then press and hold the settings button for three seconds. A blue light will flash and it's now been saved. Now let's add the controls to a dashboard. Add it to blinds. Select next. Let's go and have a look at the blinds. Select add to dashboard. Pressing the down button will lower the blind all the way to the lower stop. Pressing the up button will do likewise. If you interrupt the cycle by pressing the stop cover, then both buttons will be lit up. And then you can select if you want to go up or down at that point in time. One feature you might like to take advantage of is that if you click on the actual cover itself, you'll be presented with a slider. You can slide this down to a specific location and the blinds will lower to that location. If you'd like a more interesting card, if you head over into Hacks, go into Front End, press Explore, type in Blind. You'll see that there's a Lovelace card for Blind. Select this. Download. Download the latest version. It will prompt you to reload your browser. So we're now going to use this blind card, which has some great functionality, as you can see in the animated graphic, into our um, dashboard. So if we move over into our dashboard, we're going to have to load in a custom card. Custom mushroom template card. Going to move across into the YAML, and we're going to delete whatever's in there at the moment. Move across into the hacks, and you'll see at the bottom, there's a section of sample code. Take a copy of this. 
paste this into the paste this into the section. Now you can see that it put two in there at this point in time. That seems to be the sample code as an error. If you delete this section at the bottom, we're going to go and find our entity ID. So to find our entity ID, we're going to move back into settings, devices and services, device, we have our blind. If we go into the entity for cover, go into the settings, copy the entity ID, move back, change the entity in the description for the custom card to the one that we have, change your name to whatever you'd like it to be. And I'm going to save. As you can see, it now shows the up arrow for moving, raising the blind, a stop and a down arrow. We can also adjust the blind manually here to set it to whatever we like. And the name is being correct and it's shown is at 100% open at this point in time. And we're done. Press the done and our blind is now fully functional. So what do I think about the AM43 blind motor? It's an AC and battery powered and the battery powered is actually got a discrete solar panel with it as well. So in theory, you should be able to set this thing up, put it in, um, mount to your solar panel and never have to touch it again, which is a great advantage over some of the other ones that are battery that need to be fetched off and taken away and charged and put back on top onto their mounting plates again. Um, as opposed to an AC one, which will need to be next to a plug or have a plug installed close to it so that it needs to be charged. Um, there are two different types of these types of blind motors. The first one is the integrated one where the motor is actually inside of the rotor itself. It's a lot more uh, expensive. The cost can be two to three times the cost of this one. They need to be integrated with a wiring, AC wiring already close to them with, for the adapter bricks, alternatively built into a wall um, so that you cannot see any of the wiring associated with it. Um, the, the pros of these ones are though, is that they are less visible because the motor is inside of the actual rotor itself. Um, and they can be quieter as well. But for those that are interested in the integrated systems, there are some links in the descriptions below of the ones that are available, high quality, and that I recommend. If you wanna go down the AM43 path, there are several different varieties available um, on AliExpress and on Amazon. So the benefits of these ones are, Flexibility of installation, um, because of the fact that it is a retrofit and it goes onto an existing cord, of which there are multiple different um, fasteners for it. So it has a wide capability and wide compatibility to individual systems. If you look in the uh, inserts, you can see the different cogs that it actually supports and the different cords that it supports. Other pros would be the cost, uh, this one I picked up for around about 70 odd Australian dollars, which is about 55 American dollars. So they're cheap uh, and they're highly flexible. Because of the fact that they run on battery with a solar or alternatively with an AC plug if you require it, they're very flexible on their powering arrangements. And so they could in theory be a set and forget once they've been installed with their own solar forget all about them. Cons are that the mechanical version of these, because they are pulling on a cord, can be quite noisy as well, as opposed to the integrated systems. And also that the motor is actually going to be visible because you, you can actually see that the motor will turn around and it will pull on the cord, cord to raise and lower the device itself. Now, there have been some reported issues with this one. I'll put some links in the description below um, with binding this to Home Assistant. Um, those seem to have been overcome, and I personally haven't had any issue at all. I'm not using the Toya hub that you can buy with this one. I'm just using a Combi 2 adapter that is plugged into the back of my Home Assistant, and that's worked fine. As to the noise, they can be a little noisy and they can catch occasionally. But are these problems that are going to prevent you from utilizing it? 
Short answer, no. Uh, it's a cost-effective solution to be able to be providing automation onto existing uh, blinds that you have in your home that are cord driven. Remember that the other in roller designs also require them to be powered. So if you're going to be installing those ones, you are gonna to have to bring an electrician in and you are gonna to have to do an excessive amount of wiring. These should be in principle, a install, set, forget, if you buy the one with the solar panel. By all means, if you want to install the AC power adapter bricks in there as well, you can do, but they're not required. So would I buy them? Yes, it's a simple answer. If you've got a small amount of blinds that you're updating or you're doing retrofits into a house or you're a renter, then by all means, these are a great solution to add automation to your blinds. Well, I hope you liked the video. Remember to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and ding that bell uh, to be notified of when new material comes out. See you on the next one.